Hey everybody, welcome back to another Rework It. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and with me is my co-host, Claudia from Print My Soul. Hey, Claudia, how's it going? Hello, Jesus, I'm doing well. How's it going? Where are you streaming from? I am streaming from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area. How about you? I'm in Manchester, UK, where, again, I don't know what's going on, but it's super sunny, and it looks like we're going to have a tropical weekend as well. So from tropical Manchester, hello to everybody in the chat. Awesome. Yeah. Talking about the chat, we see a lot of familiar faces. We have Wade, Sean, um, Ferry, Carol. Thank you so much for joining us as usual. Dorina. Oh, check who's in the gonna... chat. Check yeah, who's in gonna... the chat. <laughs> who is in the chat? Who is in the chat? Uh, oh, Mark Keeps, our good friend Mark Keeps. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Adobe uh, Max speaker. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of friendly and familiar faces, and we're very excited for another rework it. Um, if you don't know what Rework It is all about, let me talk about that. Um, Rework It is a show where Claudia and I um, rework your files. In other words, you can submit your Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator files, and we give you tips and tips on how to trick. Oh my God, I can't even <laughs> talk today. And we'll give you tips and tricks on how to improve your work. If you want to submit, you can go into iamclaudy.com slash rework it. iamclaudy.com slash rework it. And I should feature and, your, your page, shouldn't I? Sorry. Yeah, you should show my page. <laughs> and you can click on this button, submit your designs. And from here, you can enter your email, name, Behance profile, data consent. Let us know what apps you've used and ask any specific questions or issues that you would like us to discuss in the stream if we select your work. Something that's very important, make sure that you include your Behance profile. We've been getting a lot of submissions where people don't include their Behance profiles and we do want to feature you. So make sure that you add your Behance profile. If you don't have one, you can create one for free and submit the work into Behance that you submit to us. So at least you have one project on there. So yeah. And today we're going to start with uh, you, Claudia, right? We're going to start with uh, an Illustrator project. Yes, yeah, so today we're going to talk uh, about Illustrator and InDesign. And um, pretty much I'm going to start by featuring the artist. We already saw some of her portfolio yesterday, and I believe Wade um, kind of digged out the, the famous, infamous pin that I really love. Let me just jump into my screen. Uh, before we get started as well, and here we are in my screen with Caroline Sarret. I want to as well to say hi to everybody in the chat. And as I said yesterday, for right now, this is going to be, uh, at least for this season, I don't know until when, but this is going to be our closing episode. So make sure to use the chat uh, to ask any question you may, you may wish to um, me or Asus regarding InDesign, Photoshop, and uh, the design industry, life as a freelance. We are here to rework your work, to talk about design, but of course to share tip and techniques 360 around this wonderful mm -hmm. industry that I think we're really lucky to be part of. And I wanted to say also hi to Ma uh, Mark, not only Max Speaker, but also Max Master, because I think he was the last Max Master um, on the last, uh, uh, like, in person in, Max. In person Max, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So super excited. And, and also, Claudia, I like how you worded that. Today is like the season finale of <laughs> Rework It. And we don't know if we're coming back for season two. Um, if we do come back for season two, it'll be later in the year, around September, October. So we're, we hope to be back. But um, yeah, it's the, the season finale, hopefully not the series finale. <laughs> Yes, yes. And also let us know if you're going to miss us. And as I said yesterday, if you want us to come back and if you enjoy being part of Rework It here with us at the wonderful Adobe Live, share a blue heart in the chat. We love your love. We love your company. It's been an absolutely uh, uh, pleasure to share all this time with you. And I'm happy that behind me there is this wonderful Car Caroline Sarret. Um, also, Sus, what I'm going to try to do while we uh, move between uh, my screen and your screen, I wanted to 
bring up some of the people that we featured. Um, and as well, you know, if you do want to use well, uh, me and Sue, so right now live, because we are live here on Adobe Live, if you are watching us and you want to head on, I'm just going to go back on it on the website for today only. If you just want to add your email, your name, uh, a JPEG of any of your work and your Behance profile, I'll be really happy. What do you think, Asus, if we take the last five minutes of today just featuring the amazing viewers Behance profiles? That sounds good. I love that. So just to say thank you back to everybody. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and uh, just share your Behance on I am Cloudy, Behance profile on IamCloudy.com slash rework it. I I think it will be like a celebration, like a little party or together to showcase some portfolio, a little bit like the artwork spotlight that spotlight that happens during the uh, wonderful Adobe Live. And of course, after us, stay tuned because there is more Adobe Live fun coming up. Uh, but let me go back and Eric Sue is in the chat. Nice to see you, Eric. Lovely to see you, Steve Festus. Ciao. Nice to see everyone here. So we said yesterday, Caroline Sarit is a talented designer based in New York and uh, already shared my love for the pin. Wade, I know that you uh, have placed the, the link for this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rainbow pin. I didn't have a chance to see it. So Caroline, if you can send me the link or if someone can send me the link uh, outside the Behance chat, just because otherwise I'm here live and I don't have the time to save it. But please do share it because I'm in love with this work. And again, this is a fantastic demonstration on how a flat illustration, so something that is born maybe out of paper, out of a sketch, then becomes a real product, something that you can touch and use. And as I say, I think it will fit perfectly in my jeans jacket. So fantastic. Fantastic. I look forward to, to order one um, on your Etsy shop. And let me now jump back into um, Illustrator. So yesterday I was a bit in a rush and I didn't have the time to really explore. And just let me open up my Illustrator full screen. I didn't have the time to fully explore um, that brand platform, as I mentioned yesterday. And uh, if you do head on imcloudy.com and in this case resources, you're going to be able to access the uh, branding bundle. Uh, Caroline has added in the case study. Oh, let's go and have a look. I love that. I love how we have implementations here of tips right away. Is the case study. Oh, look, we have available for purchase here. Fantastic. So we also have the link on our Behance profile. So rework it is useful <laughs> and we have more illustration. Fantastic. More call to action. Beautiful. I love that. Let me just refresh the page. I'm so happy to see that, you know, a rework it as much as the creative challenges, the beauty of the community and how we can implement right away, um, you know, any any tips or techniques to your work. Uh, hi, Andreas. Nice to see you. Andreas is always here with us. Nice to see you. Andreas we're, and, and everybody, let us know where are you watching from. We're always so excited uh, to see this international community. I'm just going to give a little thumbs up to um, this uh, Le, Monde, Le Monde du Silence, I believe it is called, uh, which is Lulu Diver. First of all, I love the name. Um, for those of you who speak a little French, is uh, the the world of silence and if it's not please correct me because I am Italian I speak a little French <laughs> but I'm, I could be wrong um, but it's all about the uh, the world of silence um, of the underwater photography and I think that already this name in the branding conveys the entire atmosphere of being underwater um, so we have this lovely color of course of blue and we have the case study with the branding and visual identities and this is the final product so we can definitely see that um, Caroline um, has done this beautiful case study with the branding and also uh, created um, mock-ups to show how to um, you how to how to use the brand so this is very important to show the flexibility of a logo and how to build a brand as I say all the time the the logo is not a brand the logo is only a component of a brand which tends to summarize all the most important um, parts of a brand and uh, in this case you can see that how flexible it becomes um, with different aspects now here Caroline my only uh, tips it will be in these um, 
uh, in this composition. And by the way, sorry, I got distracted in the chat with Eric Sue. Eric finally became an American last week. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations um, uh, for you, Eric. I'm so happy to hear. We are a family and we're happy for each other here. So I look forward to come back to the States myself. It's been way too long. But anyway, as I was saying, going back to this um, concept of branding, the logo is very important and allows you to create a repetition. And in fact, here we have uh, the blue color that definitely repeats. Then we have this more aqua. That's fantastic. The only um, issue that I'm finding here is that which one of these two is the logo? Is the stylized image or is the one with the with the with the wave? So the only um, the only thing that I will suggest, and of course it looks like that the wave one is the one that is uh, coming through. What I will suggest to Caroline is to simplify the use of symbolism. So unless you, for example, using a website or using the symbols for a very specific use in which is very clear that that symbol stands for a specific instance or usage of the brand of uh, or any other uh, product, I will really simplify and I think that you have achieved this here perfectly uh, with the business card. In fact, we can see uh, that the same wave that goes across the logo is then carry through inside the business card as almost a divider in between the title and um, all the different information. So the name, the brand and uh, and then the, the social media and the email and so on and so forth. So this is a fantastic example of repetition because again, that's how you create a brand. You use the logo as part of the brand and then elements of logo, the logo uh, used consistently to create a sort of identity. So next time that I see a little wave in any other sort of merchandising, I will connect that to um, the same brand. In fact, here, as I said, I love I love the um, uh, Le Monde du Silence and then and then the, the name of the brand. But again, you're introducing another symbol. So where is the wave? I would expect to see the wave um, on the bags, on the tote bags. Uh, having said that, Caroline, I love the color palette that you used. I think it's very consistent. I love the simplicity of this tote bag, but I will choose. I'm not saying that this is not good or the other one is good. That's completely up to you, completely up to uh, what is the reasoning behind it, either if it's the wave or um, this other symbol. But just try to be consistent, especially at the very beginning um, of, of um of a of, of when of the of a business when the brand is just born repetition and consistencies are key and that's why um i'm gonna uh, jump a, in a second in uh, in design as well again we have all this wave formation here which is absolutely fine another great symbolism of water and being underwater uh fantastic but Again, we can see many different elements and I can see this illustration taken from this um, uh, beautiful underwater animal, which again, gorgeous, but those can become perhaps if you create a catalog, those are fine to use inside uh, one single element, but the cover or uh, it will still need to retain the main, the main element of the logo fantastic and and so on for the rest of the project but very well done i think it's fantastic i love this photography it's so so interesting uh let us know more in the chat um about this project i think it's super super cool and i love the color palette and how kind of earthy is uh deep down in the under the ocean we almost have this earthy color which i think is uh fantastic and uh, Steve is saying, oh, it's a sea slug. Yes, it looks like it's a sea slug. Fantastic. Make sure to go ahead and follow Caroline and give a thumbs up to this amazing project. Again, as I was saying before, if you head to iamcloudy.com slash resources, you land on the branding bundle. Here yesterday, we were looking at the first step, which was how to create um, the uh, the logo development in Illustrator. And we're going to jump back to Caroline's uh, work right away. And then uh, we're going to move into the comparative stage and what Caroline has shared with us, which is the brand guidelines and presentation. I'm not going to talk about mock-up. Caroline has done a really fantastic job with mock-up. Um, and you here have also mock-up available in Photoshop if you want to do that. We talked about how to create a mock-up in Photoshop in past to rework it. So you can also explore that um, on the videos. And by the way, I'm aiming to create a collection of reworked videos on our uh, IMC 
chloe.com slash rework it page. So you'll be able to watch our little um, collection of information. But let me jump into InDesign because the time is ticking. And I'm going to go ahead and first of all, show you this little trick uh, that probably some of you already know. Let me just close it here. And here it is. So what I'm going to do here is to um, have a look at the entire presentation and then show you how you can perhaps um, move from this presentation into um, a, a better way of narrowing down your options. So that's why if you go back into the branding bundle, you will find three different stages of logo comparative. So basically it's this example that um, uh, Caroline has created. I do divide them in three different steps. Uh, the first step one will have, um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, it will have the corporate, corporate objectives. And let me just press the W key to go in preview mode where you first and foremost, um, synthesize the core, um, the core elements of a brand. Now, by the way, this is a, an outline text. So if you do wish to uh, create your own, all you have to do is literally create a, a text uh, box by pressing the letter T and using the type tool in Illustrator. And for those of you who are asking me how to use um, how to use this presentation, for example, for your logo, don't forget that um, a very nice way of working with uh, any sort of document in Illustrator, Photoshop and design is to take advantage of the layers. Layers will allow you controlling of the content. So make sure to go ahead and click on Windows and then layers to bring up your layers panel. And you see right away here that there is a structure in place. One is called master. And if you click on the little eye icon, you will see which element will appear and disappear. Uh, one is called swatches and one is called uh, layer one, which is usually where the content is. And I probably should re rename it to rename it. Just double click on the name of the layer and you can give it whatever name you want. There is any question, Asus, in the chat? Um, no, no questions yet. Just uh, talking about underwater photos and TV shows and things like that, but no questions. Fantastic. So let me go ahead and show you this little trick regarding the logo. Uh, one of the questions that I had from um, uh, from people that did download and wanted to use this branding presentation is how do I place my logo here? So one of the example that I had is literally let's let's say that this is your logo It's just I'm just going to make a red square just for the sake of our example. Um, oops. Just like so, just going to create a red square. And then uh, what I had um, the person that was asking me the question doing is literally try to cover uh, the their lo the your logo here, the placeholder with their logo. And what happened is that the your logo here uh, placeholder will still was still there. So that was the main question. How do we get rid of this placeholder and use your logo? So first and foremost, you can notice right away that this is located on the master layer. So I'm going to go ahead and open my layer content by clicking on the down pointing arrow. And I can see that this is the square to change the content from one layer to the other. Simply click and drag and I'm going to start to drag it inside my master. So you can see, first of all, that by placing it inside the right layer, you'll be able to uh, cover the placeholder. But what if you want to modify this placeholder? Why? Why I'm going to click and double click and I do not have access to this placeholder? Well, that's very, very simple. As our layers is named correctly, it's called master. That let us know right away that the content of this layer is inside the master. So this layer um, contains elements that are located inside the master. So if we want to go and substitute and use this little square or whatever is your logo uh, instead of the placeholder, the first thing that I have to do is to head to my pages and you can find the pages panel on the window and then pages and then double click on the master. And here it is. You will find here the uh, placeholder. And uh, if you want, uh, you can just uh, hide it or you can delete it and then replace it with your logo. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this little um, red square right here to replace it. And then if you go back into your pages where the master is applied, 
you will see that the logo is now there. Now, there is a particular reason um, why I have placed the logo placeholder inside a master and also why I have used that into a separate layer. Because if we do create a, and if we just work on one single layer, so let's say that we place any other image on top of these, uh, let's say I'm going to go and use Caroline. Um, and I'm actually gonna gonna go ahead and use Carolina um, images as well. So let's say this background over here, one of the backgrounds. What happened if I do go ahead and use it and add it into the same layer? It will cover your logo. So what I'm trying to encouraging everybody to do and to understand in the work in the structure of working with layers and master pages is that if you do dedicate one layer to your master content and you place it at the very top of the layer stack and then you use the another layer so for example the content layer which is located underneath the master layer the master um yeah the master layer once you go ahead and place your content inside the appropriate layer your logo will always be placed on top and this is super important especially when working on branding project because you want to make sure that your work is recognized and that your logo is there so whenever you know especially if that could be your website we can see that here caroline has done a fantastic job we have uh, uh, the same organization with the uh, master page in this case, the layer are not named, but you know, I can already tell that the very top we have our branding and um, uh, let's see other other information are inside this layer number two. And then we have an A master which contains uh, her name, the logo version and so on. So Caroline has already created this approach and um, she have different um, of course, she, she placed different elements inside the page, which is completely fine. You do not have to use just a logo. But my main concern and the reason why in my example, in the file, in the free template that you will receive, you have the logo template into the master page on the very top of the layer stack is because, as we know, as Sus probably say that a million times, um, on Photoshop, the order of your layer stack matters. Layers placed above and the content of the layers placed above on the top on the layer stack will be placed above. So in front of the elements located in layers that are located at the bottom of the layer stack. So Caroline, very well done in the structure. Um, I'm sorry that you had to Google that because we were going to be here to show you again. Feel free to download uh, the template. And what I wanted to show you going ahead into these um, different templates is that I would have perhaps uh, in your case created just a final a final version, like you can see, this is, I believe, the stage three of presentation where you have, you know, you can put your name and your brand mark. I, I don't remember uh, what yours is called. Just going to go real quick into your into your um, document to lift this from here. So we have Lulu Diver. Here it is. So in this case, we will have um, Lulu Diver. Oops, looks like I missed the L. And then core brand mark. And then here inside this space where it says logo here, where you have all these different um, um, placeholders, you can now go ahead and choose, which I believe was the final one, which I believe was this version over here, just like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. And something else that I love doing when I work with, with uh, my clients, which I think that it really, really gives an idea of how good is the design that you have produced, is to create a resize uh, um, eligibility test. This is done by creating different versions of your logo in usually a 50% and 25% uh, dimension. So in this case, perhaps you know, you don't need necessarily two. You can just, you know, just keep one. And I don't know if you used maybe just the wave. Let me see if we can find from your Illustrator file. Just going to go back into Illustrator and see if I can steal the wave somewhere here. If not, I'm just going to use just another element.
I'm just gonna use the D for now. But I'm sure that you know what I'm what I'm talking about here. So Caroline says, I wanted to get your free bundle yesterday, Clyde, and I subscribed to the newsletter, but I didn't get it in my inbox. Yes, I will definitely check um, if I will definitely pick, check. Sorry, pick the spam folder just in case. Oh, yeah, that's a very good, good, uh, good call. So check the spam folder, but I will definitely um, uh, check It's usually automated. Whenever you subscribe, um, you will you will receive it. Um, but I'll, I'll, let me know and let me know if um, um, if if you have any problem, if anybody else has the same problem. Uh, but maybe 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 it's gone into um, into a junk folder that could happen as well. So definitely worth checking. Anyway, I'm going to go back into InDesign here. And also, um, I know that we just got a couple of minutes. What I will do for this kind of project uh, when you're building a branding and you're using recurring elements is to definitely create a library dedicated to the project. So in this case, I will open my libraries panel. And from here, as soon as it loads, here it is. Uh, I will create, I will click on the plus icon to create a new library. I'm going to call this one Lulu. And let me know if you have used um, a, um, a library, Caroline, since you are in the chat. And I will going to click on create and I'm going to show you why it's so important and exciting to use your library here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the final version that we used. So this uh, Lulu driver uh, in white and I'm just going to click and drag to bring it inside uh, our new library. And I'm gonna do the same with the black version, just like so. And then I'm gonna now head back into my InDesign project. So first of all, once I'm gonna go into these uh, uh, core brand mark where I'm supposed to place all the different logos, we can see that we have a black and white background. And those are the places in which I will usually place a black and white version. So I'm going to go ahead into CC libraries. Uh, remember into Illustrator, the panel is called libraries inside InDesign is called CC libraries, but it's exactly the same panel. And if you haven't uh, discovered that before, probably you have heard that saying this a million times, but you can find any panels that we mention, or maybe you see inside our screen, but you don't see inside your workspace under the window menu. So if you ever, for example, right now you're looking for the CC libraries uh, panel, simply choose window and you'll find it here, CC libraries, and you can open that up. You, now you can have access to the library. In this case, I can go ahead and First of all, let's let's work in a professional way. I'm going to go ahead and click on the rectangle frame tool to create a frame and then click and drag to uh, create a frame, which will be a, a placeholder for our image. And then simply click and drag over from your library uh, the logo inside, oops, inside your panel. And it looks like it's a little bit too big. What's going on here? Oh, that's very weird. It's looking all, all white. I'm not 100% sure what's going on with this image. Let me go back here. And it might have been because I've added it by dragging it rather than uh, right clicking on it. But the super cool things that I wanted to show you with working with the library. So you got the gist. You can you can simply drag and drop any artwork inside InDesign. Uh, and then you can resize it. In this case, if you resize it, you'll see that the only thing that you're resizing is the frame around it. You can use the shortcut shift option command E to fit the design inside the frame. But most importantly, what I wanted to show you regarding the usage of libraries is that if for whatever reason you now have added all these logo inside your library and you decide to create a change, all you have to do is to right click on the artwork and then select edit. By doing so, the artwork that is located inside InDesign, in this case is a vector graphic, will be opened right away from InDesign into Illustrator. So InDesign will launch Illustrator by clicking on edit from the libraries. And here, let's say that um, perhaps I want to change the color of my logo to red and click on OK. Simply press the command S. 
a shortcut that will be Control S on a Windows. And let's head back into InDesign. The design is already been updated. So this is the power of working cross up with InDesign, Photoshop, and pretty much all the other Creative Cloud libraries. Make sure to create um, a, 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 a project, a library that is for your project. You can add your documents in there and then you'll be able to edit your photos and your document from your libraries. Now, bear in mind though, that you will have to see that this little cloud is there. The little cloud that is on top of your frame it will tell you that the image is um, inside uh, the sorry that is connected to your library if for whatever reason the image is not connected to your library this will not work anymore so make sure that you have the little cloud so that will tell you that the image is from your creative cloud library very last tip before moving on into Photoshop with Asus um, before before shipping your file, if you do have added any external images or graphics, make sure to head under your window menu or as you um, you can see, we had a little message here saying option click to open the links panel. So you can also do that either option click or you can uh, head to Windows and then select the links to open the links panel. You can see that here we have a little cloud. So the cloud says that again, this image is linked to the Creative Cloud libraries. If you share the document, make sure to share the libraries and you can simply do so by clicking on this little icon on the very top right uh, by clicking on this little um, avatar, you can decide to share by, uh, the, the library with whatever you want just by placing their uh, their email or the other option that you have. But in this case, you're going to break the link with the library is to select the artwork, then click on the fly out menu on the top right and select embed link. And by doing so, the image will be embedded with your file. So the file is never going to go anywhere is, is going to be part of your document. This makes your file a little bit uh, heavier. Um, I will recommend to share libraries and to work with libraries so you can keep the editability of your project. And that's it for me today. So Jesus, sorry, I took a couple minutes off. No, no worries. Um, uh, but uh, we are super excited to jump on your uh, composite. So I'm going to move on into your screen. And awesome. here we are. Here we are. So today we're going to be working with this composite, which was submitted by Dorina Boneva. I believe she's in the chat. She is a caricature designer, character designer, and illustrator from Varna, Bulgaria. So thank you so much for submitting your work. Um, let me place a link to her Behance in the chat so that people could um, follow her. Um, there it is. So yeah, so this is her work. And as you can see, she follows a lot of the Photoshop and Illustrator daily creative challenges, some of the XE Daily creative challenges as well. So thank you so much for submitting your work and for sharing your Behance profile with us. So today we're going to work on this composite and it's called the Vulture Attacks underscore surreal. So clearly uh, these are vultures attacking. I'm not sure if it's an island or a boat or something, but there it is. And um, what we're going to do is just take a look at some of the things that you can do to improve this composite just to make it look a little bit better. And the first thing that I'll do is you have a lot of layers here that you're not really using. So I don't want to disable all the layers and then enable a layer that you didn't use. So what I'm going to do is click on the flyout menu and select delete hidden layers. So that way I delete all the layers that are hidden and the only layers that remain are the layers that actually have some content in them. So now I can go ahead and click and drag down on the eye icon to disable all the layers to see how this was created. So we have a regular background layer. Usually if the background doesn't have anything, I like to just delete it. There's no need to have extra layers, but you know, that's just per personal preference. You don't really need to worry about that. So this one here is, is a sky, you know, I know I sound like a broken record, but name your layers is really important to name your layers. That way you can find what you're looking for as you work either through the layers panel or when you select the move tool, you can right click over an area and you can see the layers here, the sky layer, layer eight. Well, who knows what layer eight is, you know, it's right here. And then the sky layer is the one I just named. If I click on layer eight, Photoshop automatically selects it. Or I can click on the sky layer and then Photoshop selects the sky layer in the layers panel. So that's another reason why you want to name your layers. So, you know, call this one bird or vulture, but I don't know, we just call this one back, back uh, vulture is the one in the back. 
uh, we have a water element here. So now I think it's important to um, keep the layers that are related to each other near each other. So there's really nothing wrong with having this bolter at the back here, but it, it will make more sense if I drag this up right about here. And then that way I can keep the sky and the water together. And I can perhaps put them even into a group, com, uh, control G, command G in the Mac. And I can just call this background just to be more organized. It just, oops, I misspelled background. It just makes more sense if you are organized. So I can just keep adding, you know, um, enabling the layers and just seeing what you have here. So this is a reflection. I'm not gonna name every, every layer, but um, you know, I'll name a few. By the way, here's a tip on naming layers. Right now that I'm renaming the, the layer, if I were to press the tab key, notice that Photoshop switches over into the next layer and I can start renaming it as well. So pressing the tab key switches over into the next layer and you can rename it. If you hold shift and tab, Photoshop moves the focus to the top layer and then you can rename it. See that? So the tab key, shift and tab. So when you're naming layers, that will help. This is, uh, I guess, uh, this is another part of the same thing, right? We have this flame here, but there's no other fire elements nearby. So I'm not sure why this flame, and I'll call it flame, why that's there. I'll keep enabling layers just in case there's a reason why that's there. But no, it's actually hidden. See that with all the smoke? So there's no reason to have this flame, so I would just delete it. It's hiding behind all the other smoke. So again, just, just try to keep organized. And let me just disable this layer and disable this one. And we'll see what we have here under clouds copy. So we have a lot going on here. Um, I'm not sure why that's blurry. I would have kept it sharp, but you know, it is what it is. So you have a lot of these, these red elements here in the water. I don't think you need them just because, you know, everything else is hiding, hiding that. So I would just remove those elements that you don't really need because they're being hidden by all these layers with smoke and things like that. So you probably don't, don't need it. So I would just, you know, remove that. Um, since it's not necessary, but you know, it is what it is. We'll just keep it there for now. Then we have, um, you called it clouds, but it's, you know, black smoke going through. Something that I would do here to, to make it more, feel more um, realistic, it feels like a cutout at the moment. So what I would do is I would go into the in, into the brushes panel, uh, click on this drum pointing arrow, click on the gear icon and go in to get more brushes. And that will bring up this window here and you can add more brushes to Photoshop by clicking on this download button. It will download ABR files. You can just click on the ABR file and the corresponding brush pack will get installed into your version of Photoshop. The one that I would recommend installing for compositing, uh, there's several that you can use, but the one that I have in mind for now is this one called uh, Concept Brushes. And as you can see, they have clouds brushes in there. So click on this download button an ABR file will download. Just click on the ABR file when it downloads and it'll install in just a second. And from here, from the drop down under search brushes, you can just type in cloud and you can see that there's these different cloud brushes in that cows concept brushes pack. So I'm going to select this one called clouds fat. It's now enabled. And um, on this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, hold alt on windows option on the Mac and click to fill with black, which will hide the layer. And now I can just paint in some of that smoke back in with this with this brush. And I think it'll give you a much nicer edge because it feels more organic. It doesn't feel like it has that, you know, that sharpness on the edge. You see, you can compare the cloud here on top to the one here at the bottom. You have more, you know, more transparency. It feels more organic. The one on the one on the left and the bottom left feels more cut out and paste, but it's really the same thing. So you can do that with this one as well. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll do this one second just so I can see what the bigger one would look like. Yeah, that one. Uh, just one so, second, Asus. I'm going to interrupt you super quickly just to say happy birthday to Michelle. She's always here with us all the time. So I think it'd be nice to say happy birthday from the awesome. Phone. Happy birthday, Michelle. <laughs> Let us know in the chat when your birthday is. When's your birthday, Claudia? Oh, my birthday is coming up in um, probably two weeks. I don't even know. Two weeks. 14th, nice. of, 14th of June. 14th of June. Mine's September 9th. So <laughs> mine's still still a bit bit away, but you know, almost here. And you're going to be 25? I'm going to be 22. I'm going to be 22. All 22. right. Ba barely 22. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
fantastic. Oh, so 9th of September, fairy as well? Oh, wow. I don't know. Do we share a birthday fairy? That's super cool. But anyways, you can see I'm, I'm going, um, you know, fairly quickly here, just trying to, you know, just not have so many sharp edges just to make the composite feel more organic. So there you go. That's one thing you can do to, to improve the composite. Um, let me know in the chat if you like this idea. Um, yeah, he says, I think so. I mean, yeah, if, we, if we're both the ninth that we do share a birthday. <laughs> That's super cool. Um, I hope that I hope Wade realizes that we're joking about our age. <laughs> uh, so then we have this this vulture on top and it's got these layers. And so this is the thing. Um, we have this vulture here in the back and it's great. It, it's great that it's faded and it's got that red tint because this is atmospheric perspective. And if this were like a real photo, there would be particles in between, you know, the camera or your eye and that vulture. So it makes sense that it wouldn't have that much contrast. It would take the color of the atmosphere and, and that makes total sense. But it doesn't make sense with something that is closer to you. So something that is closer to you will have more contrast and it wouldn't it wouldn't look so faded in relationship to everything behind it. So something that you can do is maybe disable some of these layers that are, you know, flattening the image. And also this one is also this layer, this gradient layer is also flattening the image. But if you want to keep the color, just change, just change the blending mode from normal to color and you still apply some of that color and you still keep some of that contrast. Then you can go into this front um, vulture, if I spelled it correctly, layer and create something like a levels adjustment layer and then control the contrast so that it matches the composite better. And if you need a visual aid for that, just on top of everything, you can always create a black and white adjustment layer. And if when you look at an image in black and white, um, you know, if you can make it look good in black and white, you'll make it look good in color. So here, what I'm trying to make sure is that the darkest areas of the vulture are not much darker than everything else in the image. And the same thing for the brightest areas. I'm just trying to keep the contrast about the same. So what I'll do is I'll click on this black point and drag it to the right a little bit so that the darkest color is no longer pure black, is this dark gray. And I'll do the same thing for the whites. I'll drag it left so that the brightest color is no longer white, is uh, an off white color. Because there's really nothing else that's completely white in the image if you look at it. So it wouldn't make sense for him to have those, those bright areas as well. And I can add a little bit more contrast. And you know, this looks pretty okay in, in black and white. So I can disable the black and white layer and see what that looks like in color. And if it looks good, great. If not, you can of course keep adjusting it until you get the result that you want. And I think the problem here is that we might have too much red. But you know, you get the idea. So this is basically, you know, the before and the after. And you can keep adjusting it. Also, the lighting on this particular bird, I don't know if it it'll, if it works great with this image, especially because we have um I thought there was some fire element that I did I believe. Oh, here we go. Fire. This fire element. So I can see that you tried to sort of brighten up the bottom part of the bird which you know kind of work but another thing that you can do is create a layer like this just a blank layer clip it to all the other layers and paint with with white using a soft brush like this one and i'm just going to paint with white like so and maybe even more Are people putting their birthdays in the chat <laughs> just curious um, so uh, first of all, I wanted to say hi to Karen Lewis in the chat. Karen was one of my uh, guests at Adobe Live for a wonderful editorial design. So hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, awesome. I've been I've been giggling. I don't know if you heard this, but while you were working, I was here just like giggling away because before you put the flames, uh -huh. if you like go back a couple of steps when you just had the smokes, um, uh, there was on one of the, uh, I believe your left side that looked like an angry cat, just with the smoke itself, like without the big red flames. Let so, me see. So if you disable so, the flames. Um, oh, so the flames are here. Yeah, yeah I see it right here. <laughs> That's so funny. So I, I think General, General I didn't Kenobi see that. saw it. He saw it and I was, I, I saw yeah, it right away. Yeah, it does look like, like an angry so cat. That's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, but anyway, so now now that you have a white layer like this, what you can do is change the blending mode to color dodge 
double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. And if you uncheck transparency shapes layers, you're going to get that brightening effect. See that? And then you can reduce the fill opacity if you want or, or increase it. But see that? See how it looks like, like a much hotter um, flame now and you do, or not flame, but highlight. So now you can just keep, you know, adding to it like so. And let me just drag this up a little bit. And I, by the way, good job on adding that flame on there on the bird. So it just, you know, makes that seem seem hotter. But anyway, so that's all I did. Just added a little bit of 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 that blur or that I'm sorry of that um highlight and I can blur it a little bit. So as, see here, I feel that the edges are too sharp or too strong. So I can just blur it using the Gaussian blur so that it's not so so sharp but you still get that sense of like that strong highlight there at the bottom, maybe something like that. So before and after. And Claudia, I know we only have, you know, we have maybe like 10 minutes, but yeah. you wanted to do the um, showcase. So let me, you, you stop I'm me. Li I'm literally, I'm literally getting all the profiles out. So um, let me know. I'll, 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 yeah, we do, we do have like about um, seven minutes. So yeah, maybe we we'll leave that for the last three minutes. Yeah, sure. Maybe. Yeah, that works. Let me know. Let me know when you're ready. And I'm not. I'm just. I just need a perhaps one more minutes to collect. A few okay. More. Cool. Yeah. And so there's a couple other things going on here that you know I don't know if we're gonna have time for. So I noticed that you added this layer on top. I'm guessing it is. You added this layer so that you could merge the. Um, reflect. I think the reflections are too blurry, but you know we'll we'll leave them. Um, and by the way, sorry, sorry, to just interrupt again. But for those of you who joined late and don't know what we were talking about it a seconds ago, I say that because this is our last um, episode for this season uh, of rework it. Uh, if you want to submit and use the form to share your Behance profile, I will be more than happy to give a little look at your Behance profile uh, right away. So you can use iamcloudy.com slash rework it and just place your uh, Behance profile or just because of lack of time, you can uh, go ahead and find my Behance profile, which is, uh, I believe I am Cloudy. I'm sure there is like just a little tag here on Behance that you can go ahead and click and you can DM your profile and I just will just give you a shout out in the last few minutes of rework it because rework it has been all about you and again share a blue heart in the chat if you're gonna miss us because we're gonna miss you we definitely will <laughs> um but yeah so I, I um let me see because we don't have a lot of time and let me see what else i can help with in this photo so i mean so you have this layer that's adding this texture. Like, I don't know if I would have done it this way, but if I if I would have done it this way, I would have not used just opacity. Like I would have used the blending mode. Maybe like, I don't know, I would have checked overlay or seeing which one gives me the, the best type of, you know, texture that I want and then reduce the opacity, not just reduce the opacity alone. So maybe this might give you a slightly better result. Also, if you're going to, because I'm assuming that what you were trying to do here is you know, make it seem like the flames were really in in the wave. And if that were the case, then maybe I would also I would have also um, taken the, that reflection. Let me see. Yeah, it's here. You know, maybe converted this into a smart object. And I don't know if we have the time to do a displacement map, but I probably would have done a displacement map. In this case, since we don't have time, I'm gonna try to cheat and see if we can do like a, a use the wave filter. Here it is. Obviously, that's way too much. And maybe just add a tiny little bit of a of a wave. Let's see what that looks like. No, that's way too much. Um, yeah, the displacement map will be the best thing to do. And I was just trying to get away with with it by using a the wave filter. So let me see if it if it works now. That was that was not even enough. So let me try it again. Let me go just a little more. But the point is, is that you know I'm trying to to just create like a like a wave effect there. Uh, displacement map will work much better. We don't have the time to make one now, um, but I know we've talked about them in other rework it's, and I've also talked about them in some of the daily creative challenges. Um, another thing that I would recommend that you do here is, you know, with this with this reflection layer, where, where did I put it now? Is it this one? Yeah, with this reflection layer, um, actually, let's, 
I'm trying to figure out one thing. Okay, so so another thing that I would do is also try to establish a like light source. I'm not really sure where the light source is coming from in this scene. I mean, obviously the fire has a light source, but if you look at the clouds, you know, there's supposed supposedly the lights coming from the top left just by looking at the clouds. With this bird, it makes sense that the light is also coming from the top left because he's brighter on the top left than he is on the bottom right. On the bottom right, we have fake this highlight. So maybe one thing that you can do is also add, um, you know, like a, like a, I don't know, something like a curves adjust, and I'm just doing this globally, but it'll be better if you did it, you know, individually to like the layers. Maybe add like um, some contrast like this, and then with white paint, you know, on the, or with black, I'm sorry, paint on the mask like so, you know, so that you kind of darken the bottom right area a little bit. And then that helps you establish more of a, of a light source. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways in which you can do this. Maybe you could also add, um, I know I have a, a lens flare here, so maybe add one of these guys here, you know, just like off frame a little bit. There's light coming through. I don't know. Just, just, just trying to establish more of a, of a, of a light source in there. So maybe do screen and oh. that's obviously way too strong, but you know, we'll, we'll work with this. Um, human saturation, bring that down and maybe we'll, we'll colorize it later. I don't know, but I'm going to add curves, you know, maybe something like that just so that you have a, a light source. And then now I can like, you know, decide what, I mean, maybe it'll be red, right? Because that's what the rest of the image is, but you know, and just keep it off to the side of the layer, not make it a prominent thing. I just wanted to 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 sort of establish a little bit of a of a of a light source. Um, obviously, spend a little more time. I know I don't have much time now, but that's 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 where we'll stop today. <laughs> Thank you yes. so much for submitting, uh, Doreen. I know Claudia's ready to showcase some more work. Yes, yes, absolutely. And as soon as I, the, there is a lot of uh, talk about computers. So before we move into the BN's profiles in the last couple of minutes, I don't know if you had a, because I've seen a stream that you've done recently with uh, with Colin in which you were showcasing your new beast robot from the future. <laughs> um, there is any way that you can show off your computer? Because it's like, I think it's mind blowing. Like the first time that I saw it, I was um, like, what? Well, not, not like, I mean, I can't show you my actual computer because like I can't move the camera, <laughs> but I can show you um, what it looks like. It's um, mind so blowing. I, I just got, um, a, so, um, to be completely open, I, I'm sponsored by MSI. So MSI just sent me this computer and is the current computer that I'm using right now is the Aegis TI-5. And it's like this, this monster of a, it's, a robot. Of a it's like a, yeah, it's like a transformer and it's like a super powerful computer. So that's, that's currently what I'm using. So yeah, thank you MSI for that. It, and it's super cool. I just thought that it was, you know, everybody's talking about their, you know, their machines and their way. And, and I was like, this is not a normal computer. Like when I saw it, <laughs> I was just like, does it make coffee? And also it's like a phone. Yeah. And fax. <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> does it doesn't fly. Yeah. It, the design is just um, fantastic. But I'm going to jump real quick into my screen and I'm going to start and do a little scroll on people that we featured in the past. Uh, we have Lisa Fernandez, uh, which is an illustrator based in Malaga, Spain. Uh, we have reworked it, this couple two of our illustration. You can go ahead and see all the beautiful works, a lot of portrait, uh, a lot of illustrator elements and a lot of uh, beautiful illustrated portrait. I believe this is the one that we reworked it in the past uh, from the uh, Big Little Lies illustration and this one over here as well was mentioned during rework and this Julian Moore portrait and then we're gonna move into Biola unfortunately I don't think she's here in the chat today um, but uh, Biola has submitted a lot of work especially in design um, and I believe also illustrator and uh, you can go ahead and follow her on S Biola 6939 and she's based in Brooklyn New York you can see a lot of different uh, love work in here I believe this is one of the work that we have seen together 
mm -hmm. uh, which is already been mocked up. And then I'm going to move fast. There is Mia Health, um, based in the US, graphic designer, digital artist. Um, I don't see the work that we have featured in here, but we can see retouching and a lot of uh, pencil or uh, daily creative challenge in Photoshop. I'm going to move forward into Lisette. Uh, we have featured Lisette with Asus very recently. That was the, the, the painting, uh, the crayon painting. I think that was probably a couple of weeks ago. That was one of the most recent rework it. This is the work um, that we have uh, that we featured. So another amazing illustration here. And I love the fact that we featured the illustrator, photographers and so on. Fairy, of course, we want I wanted to feature you. We got like 10 seconds, Anika and Michelle, because it's her birthday. So so happy birthday, Michelle. And unfortunately, happy it's time to say goodbye. We got five seconds. And leave us your blue hearts and say goodbye. Hopefully we can come back. Yes. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.